waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex. We're going to be joined in just a few minutes with Gerald Salenti. He's going to be talking about the banker suicides. He's going to be talking about the Ukraine, the IMF. A lot of breaking news on that today. I wanted to point out an article, however, from Reason Magazine. This is written by Jim Epstein. It's called The Government's Appalling Campaign Against Small Bus Companies. Now, we've been talking earlier in the program about what's going on with Hobby Lobby and another small business, Conestoga. Uh, they were making some kind of um, uh, wood stuff. Or there was, it was a Mennonite company. These two companies did not want to be forced to pay for abortion coverage for their employees. And they're fighting it all the way to the Supreme Court and being ridiculed every step of the way as, oh, you're corporations now, so you don't have any say-so over what goes on. Well, take a look at what they do to small companies. Now, this is a story of a small family business. It didn't get as big as Hobby Lobby. This is Jeff and Judy Rogers, a black couple in high school. They started a charter bus company called Southeastern Tours 20 years ago in Greenville, North Carolina. In 94, they partnered with her mother, Took out a loan, built a garage, launched their business, and so far, so good. They're doing well. They've got employees, but then the government gets involved. He says, this company was my livelihood. It's how I pay for my food and everything, but it's being shut down. Why? Because of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, the FMCSA, a federal agency that, quite frankly, I would not heard of before, but it exhibits all of the characteristics that you typically see with these government agencies, flexing their muscle, growing their bureaucracy, and doing it as a perfect example of a government parasite. What they did was, they never had any serious accidents at this bus company, but they did a three-day audit, this FMCSA inspectors. They found that drivers had filled out their logs incorrectly, that Rogers had failed to provide employees with educational materials, that they allowed a former driver to get back behind the wheel before waiting for the results of his alcohol and drug test, which came back negative. Because of that paperwork, it's kind of like what we saw the other day with the school that went into shutdown and the mom was arrested because her autistic child was having uh, some kind of a, a seizure. They called her. They knew her at the school, school. They buzzed her in. But because she didn't sign the paperwork, they put the whole school in lockdown and they arrested her. They called the police, took her away in handcuffs. These guys didn't fill out their logs, so what are they doing? They're shutting down this family business that's been there for about 20 years. It says when their troubles began in early August, they tried to do whatever they could to get back in the government's good graces, but unfortunately they couldn't. The government was determined to turn them into a failed business. Now, after six months, they're just shutting it down. They're being forced to dissolve their, country, their company. Where was their jury trial? Where was the legislation? that gave this power. What we see over and over again is that these bureaucracies are given power to make their rules, in other words, to write their legislation. Then they have their police force that goes out, their own police force. Then they're their own jury. See, these people who created a company, a small business, shouldn't they at least have a day in court like the Sixth Amendment says? They're taking more than $25 from these people. Where's their day in court? Where do they have a jury of their peers saying that just because they didn't have the, the drivers sign the log in the proper way that they should have their entire business shut down? They've never done anything to harm anybody. They've been operating without any accidents for decades, but that's the way it happens. They didn't build that. The government built that, right? He doesn't have a business. It's all about the federal government, nobody else. Now, Gerald Salenti is going to be joining us. We're going to be talking about some banking issues. This just came up today out of Bloomberg. Citigroup fails the Fed's stress test as Bank of America gets a dividend boost. Citigroup was one of among five large banks that failed the Federal Reserve's stress test. And these are banks like, uh, oh, oh, look at this, HSBC. Yeah, remember those guys? Remember the whistleblower uh, who pointed out that they were laundering money for drug cartels? For terrorists, but then Eric Holder said uh, they're too big to jail. We're going to give them a pat on the back and maybe a little bit of a slap on the hand with a fine, but otherwise they're too big to jail. We're not going to shut them down. 
Stay tuned. We're going to be right back with Gerald Salenti, and we're going to talk about some other big banking scandals. We'll be right back. American trendsetter, a forecaster, a publisher of Trends Journal. I've got a copy of that right here on my desk, and on the cover is the Ukraine riot. That's a big trend that we want to talk to him about. What's going on? Breaking news today in the Ukraine. They're having... The legislature there has accepted, finally, the terms of the IMF cramming austerity down the throats of the people there. It's, a, it's amazing. I want to get Gerald's take on that. He's uh, described himself as a political atheist and a citizen of the world. And so as a citizen of the world, Gerald, what do you make of what's going on to the poor people of the Ukraine? Well, as you mentioned, it's on the cover of the Trends Journal, and that was the winter edition and that went to subscribers in the first week of February. Wow. And we actually wrote the story in the middle of January. <laughs> it takes time to get published. And that's what we said. It'd be a civil war there. And, yeah. and Ukraine was the major issue. Well, as you mentioned, the austerity measures, number one. And as you people have done so many times and being on top of the news and ahead of the trends, you had those audio tapes and videotapes of our Assistant Secretary of State, Victoria Newland, and the ones where they're talking about the overthrow of um, the democratically elected government of Ukraine, whether or not you like them or not, whether or not they were corrupt or not, because they've been corrupt since the breakup of the former Soviet Union, and probably before that. And then there's the other videotape of her on December 13th, 2013 this isn't ancient history and she's at the national press club and there she is standing there with a sign over her left shoulder that says chevron <laughs> and she ought to wear it like the uh, nascar race dryers <laughs> yeah exactly i mean they're pimping for you know the uh who, who pays them and yeah. they're putting you know so uh there anyway in that talk that's about eight and a half minutes well won't we'll take much out of anyone's life to listen to. She goes on to say that, which was news to me, that Ukrainians are Europeans. I didn't know that all of them were, but she informed me that they were, and that they should join the European Union. Remember that now, this is December of 2013, and to paraphrase, but almost identical to what she said, the path for Ukrainians is to take the path set forth by da, 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 the International Monetary Fund. Yeah, yeah. Or as it really is, it's the International Mafia Federation. <laughs> and, and, and really it is because, hey, you better pay us because we're going to steal everything from you. Mm -hmm. And that's what all this is about. It's about the privatization, and they're already starting to do that, of expensive public resources. That's the white shoe boy name, by the way, privatization. And that means selling it to your buddies at a really cheap price and getting a kickback from it. Mm -hmm. And what they're also doing is they're putting the people into the slavery that they've done already in Spain and in Greece and in Ireland and in Portugal. I mean, look what's going on. Why would anybody in their right mind want to join the EU? And why would they want to accept austerity measures, which again is another white shoe boy word for putting you into servitude for the rest of your life? Because here's the deal. As I said, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're going to sell off all your valuable public assets to our buddies. We're going to bring in the multinational banks and the multinational corporations and we're going to rob everything that you have. And those pensions you have, forget about them. We're going to get those taken away from you, too. And we're also going to raise your taxes. And it's going to cost you more to live. So yeah. now just be a good girl and boy and behave. Because the International Mafia Federation has just taken over another chunk of the world. You know, Reuters reported that as the IMF 
throwing the Ukraine a lifeline. It's actually a hangman's noose, isn't it? They're going to take their the gas company, the big uh, gas company that's there, as you mentioned, privatize that. They're also going to go up 50% on the energy prices of the people in the Ukraine. That's what they call a austerity program, an austerity program. How about <laughs> yeah, and again, the whole thing is a sham. I mean, look at the... It's, it's an overthrow of a democratically elected government. They got this little clown in there, Yats, with a rabbit, you know, that's they call him because he looks like one of these cartoon characters. And, and who's fronting? And it, she's out there again, that Timoshenko. Now she's talking about running for uh, prime minister. Yeah. And, and, and uh, some of her lovely quotes, by the way. The, the Princess that, Leia lookalike, the uh, one with the braided hair, right? <laughs> yeah. Time to grab guns and kill those damn Russians. Mm -hmm. Talking about nuking them. And another one, she said, Putin represents unfiltered fascism, which was even more dangerous than Hitler's national soci socialism because he camouflaged it with phrases about